So there are two topics that I'm especially excited about and that I've been talking about a lot lately. And the first one is Lightroom's cloud-based ecosystem. So that's using Lightroom on the desktop and then syncing your photos to Adobe Cloud and then using your iPad and your iPhone, the Lightroom apps on those devices to edit and sync. It's just awesome. The other thing that I have been talking a lot about is generative fill technology within Photoshop beta that's powered by Adobe Firefly. And so what I'm so excited about in this video is that I'm going to show you how you can take a photo from Lightroom on your iPhone and then from Lightroom on the iPad and use generative fill technology on those devices to add something to the photo that's going to be with the iPhone. And then on the iPad, I'm going to show you how to remove something, both using generative fill technology, starting a Lightroom on the iPhone, starting a Lightroom on the iPad doing it and getting those photos back in those devices. I think this is gonna be so cool. I can't wait to show it to you. So let's get started. All right, so here I have a photo that I already edited. This is in Lightroom on my iPhone 14 Pro Max. And so again, nothing to do here, it's ready to go. But I want to use generative fill technology to add something to the photo. And the way that I'm gonna do that is by using Adobe Firefly via the web. So check this out. Let me swipe up here I'm gonna to go to Chrome. And you can see here the URL at the top, firefly.adobe.com. So you'll obviously need a valid Adobe Creative Cloud account to access this. Once you're logged in, if you swipe down, you'll see here there is generative fill and this is the magic over here. The other thing that I'm actually super excited about, but it's not available yet, is extend image. So um, a couple of weeks ago, I shared a video on how to use generative expand in Photoshop beta. This is going to be the same thing, I suspect. And so when this does come out for mobile, I'll show that to you as well. All right, back to the iPhone. So again, we're going to go ahead and use a generative fill here, but we first have to get the photo exported. So back to Lightroom we go. So to export the photo, you can do it this way. On the top here, you're going to tap on the share button. And the very first option is save copy to device. And that's the one we're gonna want. But before you tap on that, you see the little switches icon on the right, tap on that first. And here's where you can control the type of photo file that you'll export. So for me, I'm gonna go with a JPEG, but you can see you can also output a TIFF. We don't need that here. And then the other thing that's important is that I want to have largest available dimensions. There are other options here, but for me, I want the full resolution that's available and then image quality will be 100%. Also, if you tap on more options here, you can control which metadata is included uh, as well as what kind of file name. But then also here, I typically have uh, output sharpening set to screen at a standard amount and the color space is sRGB. So we've got these settings dialed in, tap the check mark, and then now you can go ahead and tap on the save copy to device. Now, I already have this file exported in my camera roll. It's right over here. You can see this is the full resolution image. And this is what I'm going to use to upload to Firefly via the web browser. So we'll swipe up and we'll go back to Chrome here. And with generative fill, we're going to tap on the generate button over here. Then we'll tap on upload image. And I'm going to select the photo library and choose that photo from my camera roll. So here is the album and there is that image over here. I'm going to tap on it. I'm gonna make sure at the bottom that actual size is selected. If you tap on this, it'll also give you options for different resolutions. I want the full resolution image to go up and then I'll tap on done. All right, so before we start using generative fill, I wanna go over some of the icons in the user interface here. On the left here, you see two icons. The first one is insert. So this is a brush that you can draw on the composition and it'll tell Adobe Firefly where you want to insert whatever you wanna insert. The second icon is to remove or erase. I'm going to use that when we switch over to the iPad in a minute. And then on the bottom, you have different options. You've got your brush options as to whether you want to add to the selection or remove or subtract from it. You also have brush settings. If you tap on these, you've got what you would expect with brush size, the hardness or the feather of the brush, and then the opacity of the brush. So for me here, I'm just going to keep these by default. Um, uh, the brush size, the, the hardness, and the opacity is at 100%. And then there's also the option of uh, doing an auto background removal as well as inverting, but we don't need to use that here. That's not uh, what I want to show you. All right, so now we are ready to begin. And right off the bat, this is just a very simple demo. I'm not going to do anything crazy. And part of that is I feel like when you do use generative fill, 
it's when you do kind of the smaller, simpler things that could totally be realistic where it really shines. So it's not going to be like we're going to re be replacing the entire background in this case, although we could. Um, here, I'm just going to show you something pretty straightforward. So the first thing I'll do is pinch to zoom, and then I'm going to add a little bumblebee. And so I want to put it right here, and I'm just going to make a little selection. And it might be confusing because the selection I made it looks like it erased the composition, but that's just the way it is. I know because you see the checkerboard back there, it's almost like you're looking at a transparent background. But uh, this is just where we're going to make the generative fill. So here, I'm going to go ahead and type where it says describe the image you want to create. I'm just going to type uh, Bumblebee. And then tap generate. Now, this will take a couple of seconds. Um, and like Photoshop, you're going to be given a few options. So, I mean, look at that. Like, look at that. I'm going to pinch out so we can see the whole image. But, I mean, that is just insane. I can tap this one. Eh, that one's going the other way. Eh, that one's okay. That one's okay, but this first one I think is just awesome. Of course, you can tap more to get additional options here. That one's cool. That one's good. I mean, these are all great. This one's actually kind of cool too. Let me, let me zoom in and see. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty cool. And so there, you know, this looks awesome that I was able to do this on my phone. I mean, that is just crazy, right? Like, who does that? Who, where you can... Export a photo from Lightroom on your phone, upload it to Firefly on the web, do some generative fill, and then we're going to bring it back into Lightroom. I mean, to me, that just that's the future of digital photography. You heard it here first. So, so now that we have our selection, what you'll want to do is tap on Keep. Now, here's where it kind of gets a little confusing because you want to download the image, but you don't have a download button. The download button is on the top right, so you'll tap on the ellipse icon next to the uh, profile image that you have when you log in, and then on the bottom, you'll tap on download. Now, what will happen is Firefly will apply a watermark to the photo. It's part of their kind of a transparency of using AI. There will be, you'll see it in a second, I'll show it to you, but that's what that little dialog box shows you, and I believe on my iPad, I can show it to you. I think on the iPhone, I tapped on the do not show again option, but I believe on the iPad, I can show you what it says. So let's get back to it. Now, here's the important part. What I want to do is get this photo back into Lightroom. And so I have here on my share card, there's Lightroom right there. So I'm going to tap on that. If you don't see it and you have Lightroom installed, what you can do is go all the way to the right and tap on more. And you should see Lightroom as a suggestion. So you, what you would do is you would tap on edit and then you would tap on the green plus icon to bring it up. And that's what I did here. Um, and so that puts Lightroom in the share menu here. And so I'm going to go ahead and tap that right now. And it's going to start importing into Lightroom. And there's the image right there in Lightroom. And here you can see on the bottom left here, that's the little watermark that it applies uh, to the image. Now, when you get into Lightroom and if you're not sure where that photo is, all you have to do is back out, go to your album view here, back out again, and then at the very top, under the Lightroom albums, this might be collapsed. So you'll want to expand it, and then you'll want to tap on all photos over here, and you can see there is the photo. Now what I want to do is edit to that album that I had the original photo in. So to do that, I'll tap on the ellipse icon on the top right, I'll go to Organize, I'll go to add to, and then I'm gonna navigate. I've got it under projects, videos, and then generative fill mobile, and then I'll tap add. Now, if I go to that album, which is all the way in the bottom here, you can see here is the original photo, and then here is the version with the little bumblebee that we filled in all on the iPhone. We exported it out of Lightroom, uploaded it to the Firefly website in Chrome, did some generative fill, exported that, and then brought it back into Lightroom. I mean, what's not to be amazed? So as you can see, there is a watermark, and I get it. Uh, but if you don't want that, the easiest option, as you can imagine, is to crop. It really depends on your composition. You can go to crop here and then just, you know, drag up and reposition it. And that works just fine as well. Okay, before we jump over to the iPad, where I'm going to show you how to use generative fill to erase something, 
I just want to take a quick minute to tell you about a new course that I'm working on. I am so excited about it. And if you find this kind of stuff exciting, then this course is for you. It's called Lightroom Everywhere. This is basically a soup to nuts course that I'm building specifically on Lightroom's cloud-based ecosystem. So I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about getting your photos into Lightroom on your desktop or your mobile devices, syncing them to the cloud so that you have access to them everywhere and anywhere and show you just how to get the most out of it. I'm really excited about this course. I know it's going to be awesome. And so if you want to learn more, there's a link in the description below. I'd love it if you check it out. And if you do order it, I just want to thank you so much because it directly supports me and my small business, and it helps me continue to make these videos for you. So again, thank you. Be sure to check out Lightroom everywhere. Let's get back to the iPad. All right, so now I'm on my iPad and you can see I have a completely different photo. Uh, I took this uh, on the Oregon coast several years ago and that right there is my buddy James. And I originally wanted him in this photo. I asked him to stand there, but let's just say that over the years, you know what, now I don't want him in my photo. I wanna get rid of him. So you can imagine the process it would probably take to try to do that on the iPad without generative fill. Like we could try to use the remove brush, but something tells me we wouldn't get quite the best results. So I'm gonna show you how to use generative fill via the web browser, but on the iPad. So let's get to it. All right, so just like on the iPhone, the first thing you'll wanna do is export the photo. And again, you'll go to the share button. Again, here, there are options that you can select it. I'm going for the, the JPEG with the largest available dimensions. Again, we're doing output sharpening using screen and standard and sRGB. So with that, just like before, I already exported the photo. It's right over here. And just like before, what we're gonna do is go into Chrome and then head over to firefly.adobe.com and be sure you're logged in. So here, we're gonna to go to Generative Fill and tap on Generate. And then we're gonna to go to Upload Image and select Photo Library and then navigate to the photo. Then I'm gonna go ahead and tap on the photo that I wanna upload. Again, at the bottom, I'll make sure that actual size is selected and then I'm gonna tap on Done. And here you can see that we have a little bit more wiggle room as far as the, the user interface because this is a larger display. We have a third icon called Pan, which allows you to pan the image around. But here what I wanna focus on is remove. So I'm gonna tap on that and then I'm gonna keep add selected on the bottom. And what I'll do is I'm gonna use my finger to just draw over James. And so here, just going like this, I'm not even being that precise, but I just wanna make sure that uh, I have him pretty much removed with the stroke that I just made. And then I'm gonna go ahead and tap remove. I have no words, like I, I'm genuinely speechless. That took about, Four and a half seconds, I just skipped it so that there was no dead air, but look at this. I mean, this is nuts. You would never be able to tell that James was standing there. So we have these other options just like before, and this is also fantastic. This is great. That's great. But I'll just stick for simplicity. I'll stick with the first one. I'm gonna go ahead and tap on keep. And unlike mobile, there's a nice big blue download button on the top right. I'm gonna go ahead and tap on that. And here's that window that I was telling you about before that I tapped the don't show this again. Um, this is indicating the, the transparency that Adobe wants to have with uh, AI. And I think it's great. I think it's totally fair. And basically that box on the bottom is saying that content credentials will be added to the photo. In this case here, it's gonna add a watermark to the photo. So it's just one of those things that you, you should be aware of if you do want to use Firefly uh, and generative fill technology. It's not the same as when you use Adobe Photoshop's generative fill. So that's just one of the things that you need to keep in mind. All right, I'll go ahead and tap on continue. And then on the bottom here, you'll see there is a little file and the blue download link. So I'm gonna tap on that and then I'm gonna tap on open in. And just like before, I'm gonna go ahead and select Lightroom. Now in this prompt, I'm gonna tap on launch Lightroom now. And you'll see that the photo was successfully added. So just like before, if we go ahead and tap on back, then I'll tap to show the album drawer and I'll navigate just like before to the root. And then the top here, I'm gonna go to the Lightroom albums and select all photos. And there is our photo. You can see that James is no longer there, um, but we do have a watermark. So let's go ahead let's add this. Just like before, we're gonna go to organize, add to, and then I'm gonna scroll down to projects, videos, and select generative fill mobile. 
then I'll tap add. Now I'm going to navigate to that album over there. And now you can see over here, there is the image without James. Here is James, the original image. And again, we do have that watermark. So if you want, you can go ahead and just crop that just like I showed you here. I've got the, uh, per the aspect ratio unlocked so that I can just swipe up without having to uh, bring the left and the right borders in. So I'll go ahead and tap done. And again, there is James. There is no James. And the best part about working with Lightroom's cloud-based ecosystem is that if I go to my iPhone right now, you can see I've got all four photos here. There's the first generative fill image that I used on my iPhone. And then here is the version of the photo, the original one that I worked on on my iPad and the version with generative fill. And I didn't have to do anything. It just synced to the cloud. It went down to all of my devices. It's on my desktop as well. And I just think that is that really is the future of digital photography, I'm, I'm telling you. Uh, and so I really do hope this kind of continues to open your eyes and your heart to working with Lightroom in the cloud and with generative fill technology. If you wanna learn more about Lightroom's cloud-based ecosystem and generative fill technology, check out these videos over here. If you like this video, thumbs up is always appreciated. And if you're not subscribed, why aren't you subscribed? Hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified of all new videos. Thanks a lot, everyone.